we are here today because Lucy learned to tie her shoes. She actually did this a week or two ago, but she's been so busy living her life ever since she gained total independence from her parents that I've had a hard time cornering her for this video. So Lucy, how'd you finally do it? How'd you break through that mental barrier and learn to tie your shoes? <laughs> you don't know. And there you have it, the exciting story of how she learned to tie her shoes. <laughs> She can say more with one shrug than I can say in eight minutes of talking, but we're still going to have the eight minutes of talking, folks. We're going to draw it out of her. So I had some trouble teaching Lucy to tie her shoes. How, how long do you think we've worked on it for? Weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Years, off and on. So I think we were supposed to have her be able to tie her shoes by kindergarten. How, what grade are you in now? Fifth grade. First grade, we were a little late on the boat on that one. The other kids learned a little bit quicker. Everybody develops at different rates. But my wife and I, with each progressive child, try just a little bit less. It, it's only natural. I think you either, you just kind of assume eventually they'll learn from osmosis and eh, they'll be fine eventually. I've got a brother who uh, he, he ended up getting a full ride scholarship to college. And I don't think he could tie his shoes until fifth grade. He was he was a little bit different, so I wasn't super worried. But I, we just we got we finally got tired of you coming to us every morning. What would you do every single morning? So when when I done my classes, I would come to you or mommy and ask them you you mommy to tie my shoes. Uh huh. Talk to the camera up there. So we saw her every single morning. She came traipsing up the stairs, said, tie my shoes, and she'd just flop her foot up. We finally, we got her to tie her shoes halfway. I told her she had to do the crosses, the first crisscross motion, and she got really good at that. We got her to do that, and we could not progress any further. And uh, it didn't matter what, it, what we tried. And it turns out I'm a really bad teacher of how to tie shoes and everything else. It's My basic instructions are just do it. Like I can't even put it into words or I would do it and show the loops and then she would do the loops and weird things would happen and somehow the shoes wouldn't be tied. And so finally, out of ideas, we turned to YouTube. How many YouTube videos do you think we saw? Uh, three or four. Three or four. I, it was probably more than that. And you click on those YouTube videos and I finally know why people complain about mine or about anybody else. It's like, I just need to see a small kid giving instructions on how to tie shoes. And you click on the video and it's 10 minutes long. It's like, what are you doing for 10 minutes? I don't know anybody on this planet who takes 10 minutes to tie their shoes. I need like a 30 second video. And so I would find these, I was looking for videos. I finally found one. I found a great one that was like two minutes long. It's like, just watch this on a loop. Just sit here and we're going to get this. And later on, my wife came down and checked on it, and apparently the kid was left-handed, which just threw everything off. Like, I don't know why left-handed people are allowed on the internet in general, and in instructional videos in particular. They're from some weird mirror universe that just throws everything off. And that wasn't going to do any good, because what, are you right-handed or left-handed? Mm. You're right-handed, because you're not from the mirror universe. You're from this universe. And uh, so that apparently didn't do any good. So we, we tried some other YouTube videos and finally we just had to put a deadline on it. We said, okay, there's a weekend coming up and we are going to learn to tie your shoes. And here's the motivation. When Saturday comes, there will be no more TV. There will be no more YouTube. There will be only shoes and tying and that's it. And that was what finally did it. All week long, she worked on it. How do you, what are the steps to tie your shoes? I don't like to say that. You don't like to say it. It's a trade secret. She will not disclose it. She worked so hard to learn it. You've got to learn it on your own. This is not an instructional YouTube channel. If you ever learn anything from this YouTube channel, it is strictly by accident. But we did this and she got a little better every day. And finally, Saturday rolled around and we had the grand finale. I sat right here in this chair and she sat right there on the floor and we tied our shoes together over and over and over again. And there were some tears and there was some patience. And then finally, finally, we went over the hump and she tied her shoes. And once she tied that first shoe, it turned out she is the best shoe tire in the entire house. What makes you such a good shoe tire? Okay, we're going to have some false humility now. I think she's like you where she doesn't give instructions. Like whenever you ask her how to tie a shoe, 
and you already said that you were really bad at giving instructions. You're off camera here. If you're going to butt in the video, butt all the way in the video and be on camera. Uh, she ties, she pulls it really tight. So you're a good shoe tire and you learn I fast. I pull it tight. You pull it tight. No. May does not top pull it tight. May, like, it's like. Like one of my friends. It's like the loose essence of tied shoes. It kind of sort of looks like it, but it comes untied in 10 seconds. Yeah. Lucy pulls I that. Remember, I remember you had to get on her, like, every five seconds to be like, tie your shoes. Yes. I, most of parenting is just repeating yourself. So Lucy, when she ties that shoe, she pulls that sucker tight super tight like it doesn't even need to, be, need to be double knotted it stays tied all day long like me yes like you but i know i just tie it like like pull it like it's the end of the world Be betsy when when she ties my shoes when i'm running up from the car right in line it comes untied oh I'm, I'm very bad at tying other people's shoes an allegation has been alleged that she is a subpar shoe tire wait, for other people wait it stays if it's, it stays on all day, because the car rider line is at the end of the day. Oh. No, in the morning. No, all right. I have never seen that. All right. We're getting, we're getting into some sensitive topics here. Clearly, there are some hard feelings about tying other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. But the good news is we don't have to tie other people's shoes, because you tie your own, and you tie your own. Waffle and is really the only other one that we have to teach. And her shoes have zippers. She likes boots with zippers, and the zippers don't work, well, and she's perfectly happy with those that. Those boots are really falling apart. And they barely fit. But you know what? She's going to cling mm. to them forever. She's still going to be wearing them when she's 20. Her feet are going to be like, very scrunched. Like, um, like her um, red shoes that she would always wear with the Velcro. Yes, you liked your rainbow shoes. Up another painful memory <laughs> of shoes long since gone. Mommy ended up throwing those away. That's the curse of being a child. Everything you love is eventually too small for you. And also you wear holes in it because you kids are monsters and are very hard on everything. Remember my pants and my shoes? Um, that's um, like I would run down my shoes really well. Like you, well, what is what is this past tense? You you still do that. You all yeah. still do that. I can wear a pair of shoes for like six years because I just don't well, move with, that much. With, you guys, with my, with my not pants, so much. I run them down a lot less now, but with my shoes, I still run them down. Well, here's the solution: stop growing up. You can wear the same size stuff forever. Actually, don't do that because then I, then I will always have a house full of children. You can grow up, but do it all at once. Stay well, the I mean, same the size. Are, the pigs are like toddlers. Yes, but eventually they. They will die someday. <laughs> you can look like forward to that. Years. Yes, a very long time. Basically, when all of you move out, the pigs will die, and I, my house will be clean. There will be nothing small to and make then a mess. And you might get another pig. I will not. We will be done. That these small phase things of our life will be done, and we will just have an empty house, and well, it will be magical. Well, not a small phase. Neither is pigs. The small things phase. You are all small. Pigs come up to my knees. You guys are all below my shoulders. You are all small things to me. That's what happens when you're yeah. six two. The world well, is broken. To mommy, to mommy, we're gonna be big. This is true. The world is broken into be into bigger than me and smaller than me, and most things are smaller than me. You are all smaller than me, and that is my simple view of the world. And now you have that much reason to think less of me. Anyway, this was supposed to be a report on Lucy tying her shoes. We got a few words from Lucy. I think that's all we're going to get. I'll catch you next we time. You just got carried away. You got carried away. It happens. It's all right.